Hey guys, welcome back. You can see a little collection out in front of me. These are most of the knives I've worked on while I've been out here. Some of them are not with me anymore. They're actually with their owners, but um, even the ones here that are spoken for, uh, I still have them for just fine tuning and stuff, and I haven't quite given them out to everybody. This is just here, so you're not bored listening to me talk about what I'm going to talk about right now. Take a look at these. Anyway, we're getting close to the point where we need to start packing up all of our stuff for our return home to the States, which is awesome. Hooray. Really happy. Um, so I'm not going to have too much time to work on any future projects. So I've been trying to think what would be kind of the last few that I want to work on here. Um, you know, what do I want to get done? And I do have a couple that I need to do for people that have, you know, the offer I made. Give me the knife, get the material, I'll work on it. So I have three of those left, and those have to get done before we leave. But I wanted to do something that uh, was a little bit more, I don't know, impressive, a little bit more off the cuff. Not just a standard, you know, this is the knife everybody has out here, put something on it. So I was looking around at what I had. And a friend, while I was out here over my birthday, gave me a really great present. And it's not something that's like rare, and it's not something that's really hard to find or really special, but it was just a really nice thought that they did it. And I decided I was going to look at the materials I had left and plan something for that. So, with that being said, let's clear some room over here. Here is a box for a SIGTEC Rangemaster. Um, this is a knife, like I said, not rare, not special production, nothing like that. This knife is made by the Sig Sauer Company, who makes some really excellent handguns. And they have a, a few different knives. The Rangemaster here is not a super high-end production knife, but it's, it's pretty nice. It's got really good steel. It's put together very well. Um, this one needs some work. I've already been working on this one a little bit. And the first thing I noticed when I got this was, I don't know how apparent it is right now, the centering on this was absolutely horrible to the point where the blade was pushing against that liner every single time it opened and closed. So using some extra washers and just messing around with it a little bit, um, I replaced one of the washers in there with a slightly wider one from another knife that you know I kind of use for parts and everything, and you can just barely see that there's some space now between the blade and the liner. It's still not centered perfectly, but I'm still working on that. Second thing is, uh, for whatever reason, and this has nothing to do with the work I did with the washer, but before I even you know got it, it was in this condition. Uh, this was not brand new. This was secondhand. But it's the, very hard to open. It takes a whole lot of pressure and force to open that that blade, um, and you see the way it opens up, almost like it's got a spring assist in it or something, and that is purely due to the fact that you have to expel so much force. See, it's a liner lock with no jimping or anything on there, uh, which uh, I would prefer if it had some, but you know, whatever it is what it is. You can see the open construction, which has pros and cons. Uh, number one, as a con, it lets a whole lot of stuff in there. Uh, dirt, mud, grime, whatever is going to get in that knife if you're taking it out in the field. But on the other hand, because it's so open, it's very easy to clean out. Um, and I also like, you know, just from a, a looks point of view, it's pretty cool, all the openness, and uh, it gave me the idea for what I'm going to do with this thing. It's got barrel construction, no backspacer, so it's kind of like a, a very light knife as well. The blade on this, uh, it's got a drop point shape um, with a coating on it. You can see here some scratches from brushing against that liner over there with the SIGTAC and SIGNI and everything. Uh, interesting, the serrations are not ground, so they still have the coating on the blade uh, and the blade itself though the belly is ground with just the silver showing so I'm not sure what's up with that but that's cool I like the way it looks anyway this blade is actually pretty good I've, I've sharpened it just a little tiny bit it holds an edge very nicely takes an edge very nicely it's made of N690 so that's pretty corrosion resistant and it's light again the whole knife is pretty pretty light with a good thumb ramp right there with some jimping and just the shape in general of the handle is uh, pretty comfortable for holding. Like I was saying, I was looking around for what I could do as just like one final knife, uh, not one that I was going to do for somebody, but just one that I wanted to work on. And I saw the SIGTAC sitting in the box and I said, this is, this is pretty nice. So I decided that with all this openness, because we can take the scales off, like I said, the liner still has the openness in there. Uh, I have two sets of uh, jade green scales. These are the five inch scales and I have a, a sheet of it as well. I figured that if I were to uh, sand that down a little bit to about half the width here, that would look pretty nice over here because it would let the light through and it would give it kind of a, a nice unique little shape. Even without being cut down, uh, the, the G10 lets a lot of light through and so if I were to take that scale off and put this right over the liner, it would let even more light through and that would look really nice. And I saw another video online uh, related to one of the professional experts who does this stuff. They had taken some jade and put a pattern on it and then dyed it red. Well, I was thinking of doing it in the bluish green, making it a little bit darker. Uh, that would be a step I'd have to take when I And go. then I had some scraps of toxic green left from when I did this guy right here. And this video is online right now. I know not all the videos for the knives I had here have been posted yet, but I'm trying to space them out a little bit. 
But I decided what I would do is I would take some epoxy and put this put these scraps together in a way that I could then make a really nice backspacer for this. The goal would be to not cover with the backspacer any of this area that the light would be showing through. That's going to be my final personal project out here, and when it's all done, I'm not sure what I'll do with the knife, but I'll have it done, and it'll, I, I'm, I'm convinced it's going to look really good. So take a look at this thing now, because I'm going to go get started on this work starting tonight at work. And next time we look at this thing, uh, hopefully I'll have the centering fixed a little bit and it will have the new scales and backspace are all installed and hopefully it'll look completely badass and sweet. All right guys, see you in a bit. So done with, with the actual uh, grinding and the scale making, got everything washed off, uh, got dust everywhere, it was gross. Did a screw count, make sure everything was there, washers, uh, pivots, everything, everything's where it needs to be. Scales are now drying, then they're going to be oiled. i got to dry this off and give it a coat uh, with the tough cloth just to keep it all corrosion resistant and free. Backspacer is done and looking great. So what I did was I actually drilled holes for the barrels to inset them into the backspacer to make sure everything fit perfectly. And that way I don't have to worry about the backspacer not fitting right or anything. And the screws that would go right into the barrels now go still into the barrels in the backspacer and holds it all really nice. So ready to get this thing dried off, uh, get it all oiled up, and then put it back together. I love the oiling because I love watching what happens as you, the way it just totally transforms into something that looks ten times better. Yeah, holding the camera one-handed while doing the oil is not the easiest thing in the world. The difference in the look between the raw G10 just ground and uh, sanded and everything and the oiled piece is just amazing to me, how that oil totally changes the entire look really looks it makes it look all smoothed out and finished there is something to be said I think for the look of the raw G10 but uh, you know oil it is and here we are all finished final product is waiting to be revealed in the little sig tech box it came in uh, before I show you the actual knife I just want to go on record as saying I'm not as I'm not as happy with this as I thought I was gonna be the desert is a, a horrible environment for uh, any kind of machinery, any kind of tools whatsoever. But, you know, a Dremel with the giant, it's basically one big spinning moving part. So heat combined with sand, combined with the dust from the G10 and everything, I was just not having a very good time with the Dremel. Um, I, I guess there's a cutoff switch, like a thermal cutoff switch inside the Dremel that when it gets too hot, it turns itself off. And um, so it was exceptionally hot and humid last night. Um, the dust got not muddy, but it, it was just it was it was caked on and I had to use lots of canned air to clean out the Dremel I had to let the Dremel rest a lot. It took me a lot longer than I wanted, but I'm happy with the results I just I think I could have done better, but here we go So here's the finished completed SIGTEC range master. I've got the jade scales. I've got the uh, toxic green backspacer The centering is better. It's not great um I could tighten the pivot a lot more to make that centering better. If you take a look at the knife here and you look at the light in the background, you can see the centering is still off, but it's much, much better than it was. So I'm going to have to keep working on that. It's still a little unreasonably hard to operate. Not unreasonably hard, but I guess harder than I wanted it to be. So I had a little bit of trouble, you know, doing the, ge the general grind. I came up with a pattern, yeah. sort of like, um, like scaly, kind of like, I know there's a reptile pattern out there already, but just sort of scaly, just kind of not necessarily random, but I don't know what you want to call this one, but it was basically I did the wedges along the sides, and then I did a straight block in between, and then on the straight block in between the wedges, uh, I ground off the edges as well in another wedge. So I don't know, I kind of like it. Um, and then up by the neck area over here, things got a little funky as I was getting everything all done and, and fitted in, because I, I wanted to make sure I got that really nice and, and working well. I still love the look of the Jade G10. I think it looks really beautiful. Uh, ugh, my best friend out here was not at all happy with the Toxic Green Backspacer with the Jade Scales. I think it looks really nice. I really like it. Uh, just went with kind of a decorative touch in the spirit of the knife being open, like I talked about earlier, and you know just light going through. I ended up <clears throat> just drilling holes all the way through in some areas so that it was kind of open, but you end up just seeing the barrel assemblies in there, so I, I didn't intend for that, it just sort, sort of happened. On the Jimbe gun here, 99% decorative, a little bit of traction on it, not too much though. It was a little hard to get this cut out just right because the blade had to fit in there, and so I did some extra grinding. I still wanted this to come all the way down, um, but I, I needed to make sure the blade could get in there and close. And then for the liners, I left them black for the most part, but I did that finish that I love, that kind of knurled sort of uh, not quite stonewash, not quite shiny, 
you know, just a little roughed up, but, but still bright and looking good, even though I originally thought I was just going to leave it black. And I left all the hardware black and the blade black, and the insides of the liners are black. You can kind of see that extra washer I snuck in there after fitting a few around and cutting an extra hole in there to make it wide enough for this pivot. So that's what's helping with the centering a little bit. Getting the blade open, uh, not as bad as it was before, but still a little bit more force than I'd like. I think one of the problems that I figured out about opening this knife and the amount of force you have to do, it's just the placement of the thumb studs. I think if they were just a little bit lower on the knife, they would give you just the right amount of leverage to open a little easier. Because if you can get traction on the blade, it opens very easily. It's just where these thumb studs are, I think they're way too close to the pivot there for you to get the right amount of force and leverage and open it easily. I told you the idea of putting some jade liners um, over there, but I already had to sand this backspacer down. It was quite a bit thicker than it needed to be to get in there. So that was just going to be too much work with the time frame I had. I don't like this clip. Really don't like this clip, but it's the one that came with it. I put the lanyard hole in. I normally don't do the lanyard hole, but as I've said a couple of times, I don't know what I'm doing with this knife. I don't know if I'm keeping it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to sell it one day, give it to somebody. So I figured I'd put in all the options available just so everybody could do whatever they wanted with it because the plan for the, the jade green scales did work. And it's a little hard to tell kind of without shining the light directly into the camera, but the light does come through the knife very, very nicely. Um, you can see the, the black liner, the cutout in there. What I might have thought about doing is actually hollowing out the inside of that scale a little bit so the light comes through a little bit more, but there you go. I'm trying to... There, that looks... that. I mean, that just, to me, that looks really nice. When I get home, I'm definitely thinking, if I do keep the knife, about dyeing this kind of a bluish green, just a little bit darker, a little bit more blue tint, I think would go with that better, and I think it would look really, really awesome when the light's shining through that. The grip isn't too much improved. I mean, yeah, you've got some more traction because of the pattern I put in there, but I, I didn't do this one to be as functional as much as just to look The nice. contouring of the scales is pretty good along with the frame. Um, there are some minor mistakes. It got thinned out a little bit too much near the edges, but it's, it's kind of, you know, unless you're looking at it just right, it's hard to tell. And it still has a really good feel. Um, it fits in your hand very nicely. And for, you know, an EDC type knife, this would work. It, the weight and the blade style, I think, and the size would, would let you EDC this pretty easily. It's, it's not a very wide knife, doesn't take up a whole lot of room in your pocket. You don't have to see what happens with this in the future. I'm not entirely sure. So the SIGTAC Rangemaster with its new custom scales, nice knife. I'm sure a new one doesn't have the functionality problems mine has. So, you know, you think about getting one, it's pretty good. And uh, it comes out pretty nice with some custom scales on it. So there you go, guys. Hope you like it. Hope you think it's cool. And I will see you again soon. Exactly